love with him over and over again because our God is real and don't you want to go to that land where I'm bound where I'm bound to get there we sing that we'll be listening and while we're listening we're crying out oh I want to see him because we know when we see him that everybody will be happy over there Uh, there's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond uh, where the saved uh, earth shall soon uh, glory share uh, where the souls of men shall enter and live uh, forevermore and everybody will be happy over there and everybody will be happy over there and over over there and we, we will, will be happy who there and we will shout it sing his praises through that never ending and everybody happy over there uh, there the ransom of all ages will be singing round the throne uh, in a land where heaven knows a care uh, and the Christians of all nations will join in the triumph song and everybody happy over and don't you know that everybody will be happy over there and over there and we will be so so happy on the earth and we will shout it sing it praise it to the never ending and everybody happy over there and there we'll meet the one who saved us and who kept us by his grace and who brought us land so bright and fair and we will praise his name forever as we look upon his face and everybody happy over and don't you know that everybody will be happy over there and over there and we will be so so happy on the other and we will shout it sing it praise it through the never ending and everybody be happy over and don't you know that everybody will be happy over there and over there and we will be so so happy on the other and we will shout it sing it praise it through that never ending and everybody be happy over and one last time now everybody will be happy over there and over there we will be so so happy on the other and we will shout it sing it praise it do that never and everybody happy over and don't you know that everybody will be happy over and over and we will be so so happy on the other and we will shout it praises to the never ending and everybody will be happy over
Amen. Everybody will be happy over there. But I think we can be happy over here too. Amen. I know I know many times in our tradition we like to think that we're gonna be happy over there, over on the other side. And over up yonder, but I think I think Jesus uh, died and he came to give us life and life more abundantly while we're here. So it's all right every once in a while to get a little happy on this side. Amen. Amen. We don't have to wait until we get over yonder uh, to shout a little bit. Amen. We can certainly do that right here. No wonder David said, David said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm this afternoon. I'm glad to be in the house. I said, I'm glad to be in the house. Are you glad to be in the house? I'm glad to be in the house that meets right here in Camden on some street. Amen. Uh, it's good to be here. This is, yes, yes, yes. It's good to be here at the Camden uh, Church of Christ. Amen. And we're just so elated uh, to have received the invitation from a very fine uh, senior minister, Brother Kevin uh, Kenneth uh, Spence. Uh, amen. It's good to have him and his lovely wife and a beautiful young young fellow with us, with him uh, on, on tonight. Amen. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Good to see, good to see them. Uh, tonight it's good to be here good to see all of those I've known over the many years of uh, ministering in this particular area uh, and even up and down the uh, the east coast good to see brother brother Gwen and his lovely wife good to see brother and sister Reyes uh, amen and, uh, and and other others who are here in the ministry we're just so glad brother Watson good Watson good to see brother Watson here with us tonight good to see the members from the Overbrook Park Church of Christ amen say hey if you're in the house amen Amen. Amen. God bless you. Good to see you. God, good to see you on this on this afternoon. Amen. Uh, and amen uh, again. Always uh, again, we bring you greetings from the church there. Uh, we are the, the, the church in, in the community, the church in the heart of the community. And uh, we have the community at at heart. Amen. And amen again. Always good to have my wife with me tonight. My dear. We are crazy and dangerously in love. She signed her name across my heart. Ain't no sunshine when she's not around. And she is my boo. Amen. And the good Lord say the same in just a few weeks. We would have been, we will have been together 28 years of marriage. And we're just so grateful uh, for all that God has done uh, in, our, in our lives. Amen. Uh, and amen and amen again. I appreciate Brother Blackwell for singing that, that song. Uh, yes, I remember in uh, a few months ago at the lectureship, the Mid Atlantic, he s sang before me. He didn't sing that song, I believe. So I have to remind him that that's our standing contract uh, to sing to sing that, that song. Amen. God is good, right? He's good all the time. And all of the time, God, God is certainly good uh, tonight. Amen. It's been some time since I've been to the Camden Church. Uh, I was telling Brother Spence it was probably back in the mid-90s when I was here last when Brother Akpan uh, was, uh, was here. And, uh, and so uh, it's just a blessing to see the work continuing on. Uh, and you have a good man working here with you. Amen. Brother, and the person of Brother Spence, amen. And so we encourage we encourage you to encourage him, those who are members here, encourage you to encourage him, lift his hands up uh, as they get heavy, as, as they will and they do, amen. And can be a, be a source of, of strength and encouragement for he and his lovely wife and his, and his son, amen. And y'all work with them, don't work on them. <clears throat> y'all didn't, didn't hear what I said. I said y'all work with them, don't work on them, amen. Uh, and amen, and amen again. Young man, young wife, young young child, and they need your support. Amen. They need your support uh, because God is uh, God has placed him here uh, with you, and uh, and so we certainly want to encourage you to be as loving and as kind and as workable as as you can. A amen. 
uh, and amen and amen again. I'd ask you to stand, if you would, please, uh, as we look at God's word for just a moment, as we read a portion of God's word. Um, turn with me to the book of John, chapter number six. John chapter number six. John chapter number six. I'll be reading verses one through nine. We'll deal with... Uh, the whole context there but I'll just stop there um, at verse 9 <clears throat> if you have it to so say amen follow along and the Bible reads after these things Jesus went over the sea of Galilee which is the sea of Tiberias and a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles which he did on, on them that were diseased and Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And he said this to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here, which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? Please be seated in the name and the presence of the Lord. I want to talk about when you don't have enough. When you don't have enough. Think about that. When you don't have enough a mother tells her teenage son that there's just not enough money for him to go on the senior trip that he planned to go on a husband tells his wife that his vacation has been cut short because there aren't enough people to cover the shifts the employer tells the employees that due to budget cuts, there just isn't enough work to go around and many will be losing their jobs soon. A school teacher tells her students that all extracurricular after school activities have been canceled indefinitely because there isn't enough paid staff. The preacher informs the church that the new building plans have to wait because there aren't enough members to comply with the bank loan requirements. The inmate on in death row is told that the governor refused the appeal and there isn't enough time left to go to a higher court. A patient in the hospital is dis discharged with no real care because there is not enough insurance to cover the cost. The presidential candidate, yes, is told she will not win the race because there aren't enough electoral votes to put her over the top. Such frightening words, not enough, especially when it really counts. In perhaps the most advanced country on earth, there still seems not to be enough sometimes. Not enough money to feed the poor. Not enough affordable housing to house the homeless. Not enough legislation to protect our children from pedophiles. Not enough clean water in a world of 70% water. Not enough funding in every state to keep our HBCUs open perpetually. Not enough government officials willing to make veterans issues a priority. Not enough health care options uh -huh, to assure that all 
citizens are covered without going bankrupt in the process. Even in the church, it seems to be that there just aren't enough. Not enough people who really, 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 really love the Lord. Not enough men to fill leadership roles. Not enough women to live with modesty and humility. Not enough uh, young people, yes, uh, uh, millennials they call them now, willing to sacrifice with no strings attached. Not enough teenagers who love the Lord and are willing to step out of the crowd. Not enough churches, yes, uh, not enough churches on Sunday morning that reflect the true kingdom of God. Then we could argue that in this world there is just not enough faith, not enough hope, and not enough love. However, my friends, I'm glad that I serve, I'm glad that we serve a God with unlimited resources. I think I said something. I said, I'm glad that we serve a God this afternoon with limitless resources. The Bible says he owns a cattle on the thousand hills, uh-huh, and they all belong to you and I. He is, he holds the patent for water and holds exclusive rights to air production. My God is bad. He manufactures the rain and stirs up the wind to his bidding. He creates the fruit of the ground and produces the medicine from the plants. But y'all don't take no marijuana though. Y'all don't hear me now. Yes, our God is awesome and has enough of everything that we need to meet our every need. Our God is more than able to sustain this world and universe with a single word. Our God is more than able to heal the sick, to comfort those hurting, give rest to the weary, and provide safety for the battered, and be a balm in Gilead for the sick, sin world and the souls around us. Our God is is able our God is more than able and our God is enough our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly and above all that we would ever dare ask or think am I talking to somebody this afternoon who knows what kind of God that we serve but the question this morning is this afternoon what do we do when there just doesn't seem to be enough what do we do well, there just doesn't seem to be enough. From the text this morning, this afternoon that we have read, the first thing that we must do, we must learn to listen to the direction of Jesus. I said we have to learn to listen to the directions of Jesus. Verse number 10, the Bible says, And Jesus said, Make the men sit down make them sit down the bible says there was much grass in the place so they sat down the men sat down in the number about five thousand and so as we enter the text this afternoon we find jesus seeking to take a few restful moments with his disciples up on the side of a mountain and as he prepared to rest a while to share a private moment perhaps in teaching and training he became a Aware that a large crowd a large multitude of people the Bible says a great company was walking toward him you know his fame had spread for he was the miracle worker he was the healer he made their sickness disappear so they followed him no doubt the excitement of the coming Passover was also on their minds and although he knew the Jews had given orders to kill him because of his healing on the Sabbath day and his claim for deity he still had compassion on them all and as they approach Jesus poses the question he looks over at Philip and he says Philip my son Phil where are we going to buy bread to feed these people uh, Philip's feeble response was uh, we just don't have enough you know he responded brother Blackwell like many of us today his answer reflected a, a reason the reasonable the sensible and the logical in other words there is so many people there are so many people but there's so little food there's just not enough uh, brother Spence uh-huh but how many of you know that God uh-huh that God can take the things that the things that God can do are beyond 
beyond our reasoning. That there's some things that we just can't make sense of that God can do that are far above our logic. You know, with God, all things are possible. So this prompted Jesus to take charge and give direction. Jesus begins to speak. Uh, you know, I know it doesn't seem like much of a statement, but he said, you know, but there's a lot wrapped up in those few little words. He said, make them sit down. Make the men, uh-huh, sit down. He said, yes, uh, you know, you may ask, what does that have to do with anything? Well, the first thing he's doing, he's establishing order. He's speaking order. His words speak of order. He sees a massive army of people wandering and groping aimlessly and he provides a way of handling the situation. He sees an unorganized group of tired and hungry folk and he gives direction. He's giving the disciples a crash course, if you will, in crowd and people management. You know, the people no doubt were beginning to get a little bit restless by now because there was no food uh, thereby. The Gospel of Mark says that the day was now long spent. You know, oftentimes the situation that starts out fine can get real ugly in a minute when the necessities of food and water are not plentiful. Y'all don't hear me now. Just ask your cousins, the children of Israel. You know, the people began to grumble and complain Uh huh. when they feel when they felt the hunger pains on them they began to lose heart and comfort because all of those things began to change perhaps it was simply that Jesus was a man of compassion and could not bear to see his people suffer and starve so in essence he says he says sit down and come to order sit down and get in order you know Jesus assessed the situation he knew what it what he knew what was at stake so he tells them to sit down and he gives orderly instructions and so my friends it's a call to order what are you talking about preacher too many times too many times it's when our lives are out of order that we make the fatal cry that we don't have enough oops i think i said something that's a clue from lou you better get that too many times it's when our lives are out of order that we make the fatal cry we don't have enough we're either like the disciples who were walking by sight and not by faith or we're like the crowd just operating on our own following whatever the wherever the crowd goes because of the show we get so excited and all wrapped up in the high of what's happening now that we fail to plan and organize any further than we can see in front of us. Remember now, the great crowd followed them because they saw, verse 2, they saw the miracles that he did on them that were diseased. There was no order. There was no plan. Nobody counted the cost that day when they left home that day. They just saw something going on. On. he was healing folk and they decided to follow him because it seemed like the right thing to do and now they find themselves stuck on this side of a mountain with no food I'm trying to help somebody today many of us are like that today there's no order in our homes no order in our finances no order in our spending no order in our health this makes us feel like there's just not enough when many times it's not that we don't have enough we just don't manage come on now what we have you know we have enough but when it's not managed properly you'll always be found lacking but listen to the simple words of Jesus Jesus just said sit down he's saying let's come to order oh my friends your life might be like that crowd this afternoon your life might be disheveled might be disorganized might be discombobulated and it might be in, in, in disarray but when you listen to his word he can fill you with enough y'all don't hear me now I think it was Jesus who said come unto me all ye that labor and I will give you rest he can give you rest this afternoon he can give you strength 
strength this afternoon. He can give you hope this afternoon. He can restore your life this afternoon. Look at the world around us. The world is all out of order. The masses are following whatever appeals to their senses, whatever the trend of the day is. All the while, they're following, but they're starving. They're famished. They're hungry. They're chasing the next high or the next fix, uh, following a course leading to destruction. And so my friends here in Camden and Wilmington and, and Philadelphia and wherever it is you're, fr you're from, somebody's got to bring a word of order to their lives. You know, Jesus asked his disciples, he asked his disciples, what are you going to do? Uh, oh, you know, I said he asked his disciples, what are they going to do? He didn't call the government. He didn't call the social services. He didn't call Walmart. He didn't call the food bank. He turned and asked those under his leadership, those whom he was training, those who would one day be by themselves without the, his physical presence. He's asking those, those who he wanted to transfer what was in his mind to their mind. He asked his disciples, what are you going to do? And church today, he's asking us, what are we going to do? What what are we preparing our lives to do? Yes, the church must be concerned about the masses of the people. The people are crowded. The people are confused. The people are weary and hungry. How can we be a part of a community if we're not concerned with the starving people in that community? Y'all don't hear me now. they starving more than food. Starving more than food and shelter and safety activities for our children and security for our senior citizens I could go on and on but I think Jesus turns and looks over at the church in Camden Jesus turns looks over at the church in Philip Jesus turns turns looks over at the church in Wilmington and Jesus turns looks over at the church in Burlington and says now you see the masses what y'all gonna do not only must, must we be willing to listen to the directions of Jesus we must also learn from the model of Jesus I said learn from the model of Jesus verse 11 Bible says and Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks he distributed to the disciples the disciples to them that were set down and likewise the fishes as much as they would. Did y'all hear what he said? He took the loaves. He had given thanks. He distributed it to the disciples. The disciples to them that were set down. And likewise of the fishes. As much as they would. Jesus' model church can help us when we feel like there's just not enough. Jesus took what they had. Gave thanks to the Father in heaven upon giving thanks uh, he passed out the meal and a miraculous thing happened it multiplied oops I think he missed it did you see that he took what they had offered thanks gave it to the disciples they gave it out they had enough I think he missed it again uh-huh he took what they had uh-huh gave thanks uh, for what they had gave it to the disciples and they had enough I think somebody still missed it this afternoon Jesus Jesus said the Bible says that he took what they had talked to the father on their behalf gave it to the disciples to hand out and while they were handing it out they somehow had enough I'm trying to help somebody today he took their flimsy pieces of bread uh huh he took an inferior piece of bread not fit for hot dogs y'all don't hear me now he took that bread took their small fishes their small scraps of meat he gave thanks for it y'all don't hear me now he took what they had gave thanks to the father for it and God multiplied it I'm trying to help somebody today you know you know put it like this so you know how how you go to the supermarket and you buy a loaf of bread 
you buy a loaf of bread and somehow we eat every piece of the bread but the end of the bread. We eat every piece of the bread. We like the thick pieces of bread, Brother Ray. It's don't we? We like the thick pieces of bread, but on the end of the bread, there's that little piece, that little sliver of piece. And I don't know about y'all, but how I came up, Brother Cornell, how I came up, we would take that little piece of bread and, and put some peanut butter on it and roll that thing up. Y'all don't hear what I'm trying to tell you this morning. You have to be thankful for what God has given you. God can use that scrap. I'm trying to help somebody today. When you thank God for what you have and you pray about it, you take what you have. Thank God whatever it might be. It might be just a little scrap. You thank God for it and God will multiply it. And so, as they handed it out, they were engaged in the process. They assisted in the process. Don't miss that. He gave it to his disciples, and they helped in handing it out. They had enough to go around, and everybody was satisfied. I'm trying to show you this model today, church. Bring what you have to the Lord. Give thanks no matter how great or how small it is. Be willing to engage in the process. The disciples had to pick it up and pass it out. They had to work, if you will, and then watch God multiply. I said, bring what you have to the Lord. Give thanks no matter how great or small. Be willing to engage in the process, i.e. work, uh-huh, and watch God multiply, and everybody will have enough. I don't know about you, but I serve a God who's able to do a lot with a little. The miracle is God's and the prayers come from us. But when we get busy doing the work that God would have us to do, don't worry about where it's going to come from. It just appears. I'm trying to help somebody. Do you see it? Our job is just to bring whatever we have to God, thank God for it, and then go to work. Somewhere, somewhere from the hands of Jesus to the hands of the disciples to the multitude, God went to work and multiplied. I don't know exactly what it looked like. I don't know at what point, but I know that as he gave it to them, as they gave it to him, he blessed it. They handed out, it handed it out, and they all somehow had enough. You know, the times we fear we don't have enough other times we should take that which we think is insignificant the small the weak the empty place it in God's hands watch God go to work and then be willing to be a vessel with ready hands not only today finally not only must I learn the model of Jesus here it is we must we must learn Verse 12 says, when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. In other words, lift up the broken pieces and the leftovers. Y'all don't hear me now. Lift up the broken pieces and the leftovers. You know, sometimes we, we don't have enough because we fail to gather up the broken pieces. Stay with me now. Understand that, 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 that sometimes during the process of life, people get broken. Trying to help somebody. People get left out. Or at least by their perception, they, they become leftovers, if you will. Even when the good work is being done, people still get or feel broken or left out. Like the Grecian widows in Acts chapter 6. Uh-huh. Uh, ask them. They feel left out. Ask the daughters of Zelophehad in Numbers chapter 27. They felt left out. There are many reasons people are broken in the process. Uh, misunderstandings, bad judgments, uh, sickness, uh, jealousy, envy and any number of other perceived and actual abuses. I can imagine that when the bread was being passed out and the fish was being passed out, that some fell by the wayside. Some was not used. Some was half eaten. Y'all don't hear me now. But even too much, uh-huh, but even 
some was even broken too much that they couldn't use it and it became leftovers the point I'm trying to make is they're still useful come on now they still had value Jesus said gather up the broken pieces that nothing be lost the church today has to be concerned about the broken and the leftovers you know people are broken homes are broken marriages are broken finances are broken governments are broken relationships are broken people are leftovers they're abandoned they're alone they're depressed they're despondent they're discouraged they don't know what they're going to do they need somebody to lift them up they need some gathering they need a loving touch and a friendly hand why because they're still valuable i'm trying to help somebody he wasn't wasteful with the food and he's not wasteful with the souls of man god god is a gathering god god is a rescuing god when the children of israel were enslaved in egypt god came and gathered them and rescued them and brought them out of their captivity they were broken but god still gathered them when the nation had sinned they were in captivity God gathered them God rescued them again and brought them out even when the apostle Paul was broken he was needing he needed somebody to rescue him he said oh wretched man that I am who shall set me free from the body of death it was Jesus that came to his rescue he's concerned today that that no one be lost new might be broken here this afternoon Jesus can rescue you Jesus can save you you might think you're a leftover this afternoon you just need to come to Jesus not to Jesus Jesus wants you because you are worth being saved God is the God just call a roll brother Spence God is the God of broken pieces and leftovers I don't know about you the Bible is filled with broken pieces and people who were leftovers Abraham was left over because he was old uh-huh Elijah was suicidal he was a leftover Joseph was abused and left behind he was a leftover Job lost it all he was a leftover Moses stuttered he was a leftover Gideon was afraid he was a leftover Samson was a womanizer a leftover Rahab was a prostitute a leftover the Samaritan woman was divorced divorced and divorced and divorced uh-huh Noah was a drunk a leftover Jeremiah thought he was too young a leftover Jacob was a cheater a leftover David committed adultery he was a leftover Jonah ran the other way he was a leftover over Naomi was a widow she was a leftover Peter cursed like a sailor and denied Jesus a leftover Martha was too uptight she was a leftover like some folk in here too uptight this afternoon that's all right amen I'm going back to Philly in a little while y'all don't hear me now Zacchaeus was short and loved money a leftover disciples fell asleep on Jesus Paul was a chief of sinners a leftover over you were once broken I said you were once broken well I better speak for myself because y'all look too sedity up in here I once was broken I once was lost I once was on the outside but praise be to God I said praise be to God I once was lost but now I said but now I said but now I said but now I am found I once was lost I once was a broken piece of fish I once was a broken uh-huh piece of uh-huh bread but God lifted me up I said God lifted me up and he placed my feet on a solid rock and so I'm trying to help somebody you might be here today and think you don't have enough give what you have to the Lord let him bless it and watch God multiply it amen amen brother Spence my word to you is is give what you have to the Lord 
let God bless it and watch God multiply it. I'm a witness. Watch him multiply it. Don't worry about what's happening over on this side and what's happening over on that side. You just give God what you have. This church, you give God what you have. Let God bless it and watch God multiply it. And then sooner or later, you'll have so many, you have so many blessings. I say, you have so many blessings. You have so many blessings, you won't have room for it. And you wonder where all of this come from, where everything come from. It came because you gave what you had to God. Let God bless it and watch it multiply it. Is that all right? Y'all fanning because I know it's hot. And I've already preached once this morning. I'm already hot as it is. But that's all right, amen. But listen, listen, God, God is a good God. I say, God is a good God. He's good all by himself. Huh? He don't need me to try to be any, any better. He just needs me to be faithful, amen. And God needs you to be faithful tonight because Jesus is the one. Nobody can do you like Jesus. Huh? I said, can't nobody do you like, like Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's why all of my all of my trials I bring to Jesus. All of my troubles I bring to Jesus. Because nobody but Jesus can really satisfy my soul. Nobody but Jesus can really understand my emotional feelings. Nobody but Jesus can really fulfill my spiritual requirements. Nobody but Jesus can sustain my inner peace. Nobody but Jesus can refresh my weary and heavy heart. Nobody but Jesus can grant my deeper fields, my deeper longings, and my deeper desires. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Somebody this afternoon may need to put their hope in Jesus. Amen. Put your hope in God today. Put your hope in Jesus today uh huh if you put your hope in man man will let you down if you put your hope in money money will deceive you every time if you put your hope in health health will leave you yes it will if you put your hope in education it will fail you if you put your hope in looks uh, they will turn on you if you put your hope in family they will disappoint you but if you put your hope in Jesus Jesus said I'll never leave you nor for here. Am I right about it? And so this afternoon is my prayer today that you might be here. You might be like these broken pieces of fish uh, and this bread. Let Jesus gather you. Let God's people gather you and watch what God can do in your life. Yes, yes, God can multiply. God is a multiplying God. And so church, that's my message to you today. My message to all of the churches in, in the area. Give what you have to God. Pray over it. Let God bless it. Don't worry about where it's coming from. God is in the multiplying business. And God will multiply your efforts. And before long, you'll wonder, we have so much, we don't know what to do with it. Amen? I'm going to ask Brother Blackwell to lead us in a song. If you just need prayer today, if you just need prayer, if you just need someone to say, you know what, I'm almost at the end of my rope. I'm broken. I feel like I'm left out. I feel like I feel like a leftover. Let's gather around him. Let's gather around you today. If you're here today, perhaps you're not a member of the body of Christ. You come by hearing the word of God, believing the same word, repenting of your sins, confessing Christ and being baptized in water for the remission, for the removal, for the stripping away of your sins. If you, if you need to do that, we encourage you to come right now. While together we stand and sing a verse of a song that's been selected for us. All things are ready.